Just a second. Just give me a second. At the end of the last video, we had the structure of the arcade just about ready to paint. Before we can paint, we need to add a few structural pieces and cut a hole for the coin door. I drill a hole in each corner, large enough for a jigsaw blade to fit through, and then I connect the dots. To make the cabinet easier to move around, I install a caster on each corner. Depending on the size of your cabinet, you'll need to make sure that you use the correct load rating. Install these with washers and lock nuts. They see a lot of force in different directions, and you want to make sure that they're as stable as possible. I router a slot in the top of what will become the lower cowl, and I'll screw it in at an angle that matches the monitor's viewing angle. Up to this point, the rear has been left open, which is bad for balance and overall rigidity of the cabinet. I cut a few large squares to the correct width. I test my reflexes. Then I screw them into the guide blocks that we installed in the last video. Do the same for the lower portion of the backside. The cabinet is much easier to manage now. Above the monitor, I've installed an upper cowl. We'll use this to mount a sheet of acrylic later. With the upper cowl in place, we can cut a piece to fit the remaining space and house the speakers. Once the structure is done, I take it out to the garage and drown it in a few coats of paint. MDF drinks like my dad did when I was a kid, so a coat of shellac should be used to seal the cabinet before painting. While our paint is drying, we can work on our control panel. I'm using a Forstner bit to carefully punch the holes for all of the buttons, because it leaves a much cleaner edge than a hole saw. If you Google Arcade Button Layout, you can mimic your favorite console. Once the holes are cut, I sprayed a few layers of textured black and cut a sheet of acrylic to match the holes and protect the surface. I use the select and start buttons to hold the acrylic in place, while I put in all the other buttons.
To install the joystick, line up the rod with the center of the hole and pre-drill a hole for each screw. You don't want these screws to go all the way through. Snug up the screws, make sure the joystick is centered, then tighten down the rest of the way. Slide the joystick cover on and screw on the knob. If you're making a single player arcade, you'll do this once. For two players, multiply. Snap the button wiring into the USB encoders. And now that our paint is dry, we can start final assembly. I've installed the control panel with bolts and nylon lock washers so the panel can be open to service or troubleshoot. Slide the speakers and their wiring back into place. I use these simple trim rings to give a nice polished look. Shove the coin door wiring into the cabinet and slide it into place. A nice optional piece is the sheet of aluminum diamond plate. It gives it that real arcade feel and protects the front from being scuffed. I've drilled and countersank each corner, so a few short wood screws will hold it in place. The front edge of the control panel needs its T-molding before the rest of the cabinet. The molding has to be trimmed to fit, and if there's other molding in place, trust me, you'll cut it. I've cut a piece of acrylic to width, and I'll slide it down into the slot I made earlier. It's a snug fit, but once it's in, it can be screwed into the upper cowl. Now it looks like an arcade machine, but we need to get power to everything. I'll drill and cut a hole like I did with a coin door in order to install a Switch C14 power plug.
Then I've cut the end off a power distribution strip, and I'll wire it to the back of the switched power plug. I'll save you the trouble of watching me plug everything in, but this is where the magic happens. Don't worry, the Blue Painter's tape wire management is temporary. This system runs off a Raspberry Pi 3 running RetroPi and a couple of USB encoders attached to the buttons. The last thing we need to take care of is the lighting for the marquee. I've cut a piece of signboard to fit the opening at the top of the arcade, and I'm going to use LED light strip to make an array. You can buy these from Amazon under about 400 different brand names. I cut a hole for the plug to fit through, then I start laying the strips I cut in rows. Peel away the backing. Then I solder all the contacts back together with jumper wire. I use a few pieces of aluminum L to hold a sheet of acrylic over the marquee lighting. Frosting this acrylic and applying a marquee decal of your choice really makes the entire project come to life. Now to finish up the T-molding. Just set it into the routed slot and give it a few love taps to make sure it's tight. On inside curves, press the T-molding in tight to where it'll live, then mark and cut a V out of the backing, right at the center of the curve. For outside curves, do the same, but make sure the molding before the bend is nice and tight, or you'll end up with wonky corners. With the finishing touches done, we can turn on our arcade and enjoy the fruits of our labor. If you've made it this far, thanks for taking the time. If you enjoyed or were inspired, please leave a like. I'll see you in the next one.